is Jimmy the Fontmeister and today I'd like to talk about international fonts on the Macintosh. What I've done here is I've opened Arial as you can see here in Photographer and uh, I've selected a Hebrew character down here because I want to illustrate to you how uh, while we're at it we might as well talk about bi-directional fonts or bi-die fonts that type from right to left. So the reason I opened Arial is because it has several languages embedded in it and I need to stress at this point that I'm not trying to uh, teach you to open commercial fonts and take the characters and put them in your font and change the name and sell them commercially. I'm only uh, using Arial for uh, illustration purposes here, okay? If I had an assignment to create an international font, the first thing I would do would be to open up an existing font so I could uh, kind of get a feel for the characters and you know their sequence and we're, we got a lot of work to do but just to get yourself started using Arial as a template I would hold my mouse down on the first Hebrew character drag to the end of that range and then do a copy and then I would open a new font I would go to element font info and I would change my encoding to Hebrew. Then I'd go at the beginning of the Hebrew range and I would paste the clipboard in there. Now if you do it the way I'm suggesting here you'll notice that a lot of the characters just fell into place for you uh, in the proper uh, sequence that you know Hebrew fonts are supposed to. But let's say you had a character that uh, you, it, you can see here that it's not defined if you have a character that's not defined that's that's denoted by these double asterisks here means not deaf or not defined you should highlight that character go to element selection info and you can use either the glyph name or if you know the unicode number to define that character now keep in mind that because of, um, let's say, the evolution of the Unicode process going back years ago, that there are sometimes going to be different names for the same character. But anyway, since this is the quick start version, what we want to do is to illustrate the point of how we can quickly get a Hebrew font up and running for now. So we're going to go to Element Font Info. I'm going to give it a name. and then all I've got to do is go to file and generate that font and let's stick with Mac OS X and open type and I generate and install the font okay after I generate and install the font I'm gonna open up something like text edit to uh, test this font now you'll notice up at the top of my keyboard I have a United States flag and a Hebrew flag you, you want to be sure to uh, have this uh, keyboard installed and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute but also I want to uh, make clear that you can use the keyboard viewer if you're like me and you don't read Hebrew to be able to find the characters now I see here that this looks like one two three four five characters over from the tab key is this Hebrew Aleph so uh, that tells me that if I press the letter T I can get an Aleph. Notice how it's moving from right to left and pushing the characters to the right. Okay, now I want to show you how I got that uh, flag up the top of my screen. I go into the System Preferences, go to Language and Text, and uh, Input Sources. What I did is I just scrolled down here and picked Hebrew off the menu, and that put that little flag up the top of my screen. Now. You could also have changed your entire system to be a Hebrew, Greek, Spanish, German, French system where everything on the screen is in that language. But to be able to toggle back and forth between languages, uh, you can just use this import input sources to display various flags up at the top of the screen. So I call it the keyboard switcher, which is kind of a, a leftover from the uh, the PC, but uh, I guess this is the language and text 
uh, system preferences. This should get you started on some of the things you've got to know in order to create an international font. If you want more details, uh, go ahead and send us an email. We're always looking for suggestions of the kind of things you'd like to see covered in this series. Also, uh, there are more details in the user manual, and that can be found uh, at uh, fontlab.com in the Fontographer uh, section. Also, in, on that page, there are some good Fontographer tech notes that can help you with international fonts. Thanks for watching the Fontographer tutorial series, and we'll see you next time.